Hey everybody and welcome back to Astrologaster where we meet back up with old Humphrey Bell here. Let's go ahead and check in on him and see let's re remind ourselves what he had been up to. So he came in wanting to lose weight and we told him just to eat less but he decided that wasn't fast enough so he wanted to uh, purge basically. Um, then he came back asking why he wasn't making as much money as other people in his like theater group. So we told him to form a union. Good day, Mr. Bell, and well met. I recall you were hoping for a pay rise. How did that go? Well, I got a pay rise, innit? I took your advice about banding together with the other hired men and oh, yeah. about how much coin we was getting. Turns out, number one of the lads weren't getting paid enough for his lady parts neither. So, we all refused to do our rehearsals until the boss man fixed it. Well done, Mr. Bell. I must say, I am most proud of you. But this day, I am come about my skin. Your skin? It's so clapped, I need twice as much ceruse as normal. Ah, yes. Venetian ceruse. The white lead and vinegar paste ladies and players use to whiten their faces. Uh, don't put lead you on your have face. You to fix it for me, Doctor, for my role in Mr. Shakespeare's new play. I'm to play a lady who disguises herself as a lawyer. A lady cunningly disguised as a lawyer? <laughs> Forsooth, how original. But I see not why you need worry over your complexion. Having a sound grasp of Latin and a, a talent for eloquence are the usual qualifications of a legal advocate, are they not? Is it verily necessary for this lawyer to have beauty as well? Verily. Well, Mr. Burbage seems to think so. These are enlightened times, and we must have confidence in our audience that they will accept, even welcome, the notion of a lady of learning, as long as she be lovely enough to lie with. I see. And tis true your skin is looking a little less than lovely at present. It's because you're rubbing lead all over it. Let us see if we may find a remedy for it in the stars. You have lead what is the matter with Humphrey Bell's face, and what may be done to improve its appearance? How about don't red rub lead all over it? How about that? What's the matter with my skin, and what may be done to fix it up? Humphrey suffers from melancholy, a condition that can make the skin appear pale in appearance, and induce fanciful imaginings in the mind. Well, that's not it. Humphrey suffers from a distemper of the liver... Occasioned by some kind of poison. Well, there you go. Lead poisoning, my my friend. Lead poisoning. Humphrey is troubled with ugliness. This suggests the illness will get worse before it gets better. You you just have an ugly face, dude. No, it's it's lead poisoning, my friend. Lead poisoning. These stars indicate that your skin troubles are occasioned by the ceruse paste you're applying to your face. Exactly. The lead it contains is causing your scabs and, if I am not mistaken, some thinning in your hair. That's it. But these are merely indications of a greater trouble it is causing. A distemperature of the liver. You must no longer apply lead to your face, Mr. Bell. What do you mean, like, tis poisonous or something? Exactly. <laughs> oh, nay, lead is not poisonous. You merely seem to have a sensitivity to it is all. That's wrong, Simon. I will write you up a prescription to take to an apothecary. He will concoct you a paste from alum, tin ash, and sulfur as a replacement for the ceruse you have been using. And to hide the damage to your skin, you might apply the white of a raw egg to your face. It will act as a kind of glaze over your complexion. So all this will fix my face, yeah? So, I thank you kindly, Dr. Foreman. Yeah, you're welcome, Mr. Bell. Glad to be of service. Now, if you could just give me a letter of recommendation, that's, that's what I'm asking for payment, please. The queer did wish to know what the matter with his skin was and asked what may be done to improve its appearance. I did tell the queer that his face was afflicted by the lead he was using to whiten his face. I did prescribe him an alternative beauty treatment. Methinks the queer was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Yeah, you probably saved him from dying a horrible death of lead poisoning. Though I don't know if uh, the, the prescription you gave about alum and tin and... And whatever it was, sulfur ash is any better. There we go, 60% of the way. I shall be the best man playing it being a woman, playing it being a lawyer Mr. Burbage could ever ask for. Oh, yes. 
Mr. Foreman. Hello, Mr. Doubtless Smith. Doubtless I need not explain why you have been brought before the College of Physicians this uh, day. Please explain. We have been informed that you persist in practicing medicine without a license, in defiance of the law, and in spite of previous warnings given you by myself and my distinguished colleagues. How do you answer this charge? Uh... Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Sirrah? I say... I say that I am a good doctor. There you go, Simon. And that my many years of experience have allowed me to perfect my methods as a true physician. There you go. <laughs> you would dare speak of your methods, Mr. Foreman. We are informed that you write your patients' names and complaints in a notebook. I do. Doubtless all the better to blackmail them with. No. Ah, yes, my case books. Indeed, sir. Tis most useful to be able to remember a Quirin's history. Exactly. Furthermore, you use astrological readings not simply to predict the course of an illness or judge the best time for a treatment, as good medicine teaches us, but you find the cause of the disease in the stars. Not always. You refuse to examine your patient's urine for this purpose. Well, yes, for... And you would dare claim that in these past years you have gained medical knowledge and skill from mere experience? We have. <laughs> Then I invite you to provide proof of it now. Uh, not you another test. You will submit to an examination. Oh, I should have been paying more attention to all these all along, but I never would have remembered, honestly. I would have never remembered these, even if we had been paying attention. Which humor does Saturn rule over? Um, Saturn... I don't know. This is just a complete 25% guess. Um, yellow bile. That was wrong. Some with an excess of black bile may exhibit a melancholic temperament, a, color, a, a choleric temperament, a sanguine temperament, or an exceeding vexing temperament. Um, a melancholic one? There we go. Which planet rules intelligence? Uh, Mercury? Thank you, Sailor Moon, for that. Which zodiac rules the head? Um, Aries? There we go. Thank you, Humphrey Bell. Silence. Simon Foreman, you have failed this examination. Hey, we got 75%. And thereby have proved yourself unfit to practice medicine. Remove this charlatan, this carnival quack from my sight. What? Again? I demand to speak with my legal counsel. You will regret this. Uh-oh. That doesn't seem very good. Sir, it was with shock and distress that I did learn of your current situation, but worry not, Dr. Foreman, for you will be freed from jail this very day. I bade my husband, Lord Dyer, exert his influence on your behalf, but I must warn you that the College of Physicians cannot be obstructed for long and that you verily ought to procure a medical license. Your querent and most assured friend, Lady Emma Dyer. Um, Emma Sharp? Did you not kill him yet? Oh, yeah. Lord Dyer just had the diabetes, and you were on your way to kill him. Alright, we know a little bit what was going on with Miss Blagg, but let's... Let's just remind herself. So she was a drunk. Um, we told her that her husband had spent all their money. We failed to get her into a relationship with the Bishop of London. And then we had some unfortunate discussions about her lover, Owen Wood, the Dean of Armagh. There was a small bug that allowed us or made us click a certain option that did not turn out to be true. And then we were sworn to secrecy that her husband had this terrible disease and we just told her that he was depressed. But then he died of that terrible disease we didn't tell her about. Well met, Alice, dear friend. Since your husband's death, I have oft thought of you. Fare you well? In truth, for a while I was most vexed with you. Indeed, tis why I did not come sooner. Your false diagnosis left me unprepared for Blag's passing. Yeah, he told us Instead not to tell you. Instead of being by his bedside, I was at the quiet bear when he died. Tis not easy to make arrangements for a funeral after several flasks of wine, Foreman. Aye, failing to remark the seriousness of his condition is one of my abiding regrets. I hope you may one day forgive me. Oh, nay, nay, tis all forgotten. 
Besides, I think what I took for anger was grief in truth. I think I verily did love that old fool. I'm surprised, madam. Despite his mump-headedness and his leaving me and the children with not a penny between us. But the day after he passed, I came upon a note he had writ for me. Yes. I warrant that was your idea, was it, Foreman? Indeed. It may have been. Then I thank ye for it, Simon. It was a comfort to be left something to remember him by, even if it be the only thing he did leave me. But things are better since I did become Mistress Maze. Oh, then you have remarried. Indeed. Aye. It was the only means of putting a roof over our heads and meat in our bellies. And Mr. Maze is a kind man. I've never heard of this man. Oh, but Foreman, we may not have our roof much longer. Maze has threatened to leave me. Verily. A brute. Well, to be fair, I suppose I did fail to apprise him of the full extent of Blag's debts, which are, as you know, not inconsiderable. And now he owns but them. what am I to do about it now? Ah, yes, of course. By marrying you, he is now responsible for the debts of your late husband, according to the law. It's a weird law. In sooth, tis a high price to pay for a wife. No matter the marital bliss, her bountiful charms and fine qualities do doubtless afford him. Ah, oh, save it for another day, Foreman. Tis not your chub-brained flattery I am come for. Tis your counsel. Of course, madam. Then let us see if the stars may offer a solution. How may Alice may say prevent her husband petitioning for a divorce? You could kill him. I mean, we know of a queer that has been pretty, uh, pretty prolific at that, so if he's dead, he can't divorce you. How can I prevent my new husband from divorcing me over my late husband's debts? Mr. Macy feels nervous about being burdened with Thomas Black's debts and angry toward Alice as a result. A family trip might turn things around. Okay, sure. A family trip in which you throw him off a cliff? God is punishing the deceased Thomas Blagg by visiting the evil sins of the father upon his widow and children. Um, pretty sure in the Bible it says that that's not something that happens. Thomas Blagg's legacy is the debts he has burdened his widow with. Alice must be realistic and temper her hopes. Now let's go with the, uh, go on a trip and throw him off a cliff. Alas, you have little hope of calming your new husband's feelings about your late husband's debts. But the stars suggest that your family might go abroad and thus put yourself out of the reach of Blag's creditors. You must do this without delay. Go abroad? You mean where foreigners live? I Indeed. My chart also suggests that you find some creative solution to ensure your husband's cooperation in such a project. Has he ever expressed an interest in the New World colonies? Or perchance you might suggest an extended tour of Roman antiquities? Ah. Nay, but I will put my mind to it. But if we do go abroad, this is doubtless the last time I shall ever see you, Foreman. That is, that is too bad. The queer did wish to know how she might prevent her new husband, Mr. Macy, from divorcing her over Thomas Black's debts. I did suggest the queer think of a reason for her family to move abroad where they would find themselves beyond the reach of Black's creditors. He thinks the queer was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. And then, uh, then there was some items, some actions in the uh, examining room we will not talk about. But that was her last, was indeed her last visit to us, and we did not get her letter recommendation. Come on, Alice. You can do it. Macy was chump-headed enough to marry you, so mayhap he'll go abroad with you as well. Hear ye, hear ye. Nation mourns death of beloved queen. King James of Scotland ticked to succeed to the English throne. Hear ye. So the queen is dead. All England is in mourning as news spreads of the death of our beloved sovereign. Queen Elizabeth Tudor, oft referred to as God... Her good Queen Bess, by her subjects, expires of natural causes on this day, the 24th of March, the year of our Lord, 1603. Although Her Majesty left no heir nor named a successor, her cousin and nearest blood relation, 57-year-old James Stuart, King of Scotland, is rumored to be traveling down from Edinburgh to be crowned King of England later this week. Um, is he a Catholic? Is that a... Because he did not succeed... 
to the throne, right? I, I can't remember my English history. Humphrey Bear, you must not taste it so ill, for all your beauty does fade, we do adore you still. I suppose you want to go to the door, so I'm going to find at the sight of your shapely behind. Oh yes, Humphrey Bell's shapely behind, which we will never see because we always see everyone from the front. Um, well, we know what's up with him. He has lead poisoning. Good day, Mr. Bell. Oh, I must congratulate you on your performance of the comely lady lawyer in The Merchant of Venice. And methinks your skin is much well, improved. That's good to hear. It is verily glowing. I, Dr. Foreman, changing my lead paste for sulfur work very well. Mistress Burbage says I now look a picture of beauty. Did she now? Forsooth, it is well to hear the troubles with your skin are resolved. Now, what is it you come for this day? Mr. Shakespeare has written a new play, and I need to look younger if I'm to get a good part in it. Look younger, that's about hard. an ancient Roman general called Titus Andronicus. I wish to play the role of his comely mother, the Lady Tamara. You need to look younger in order to play a man's mother, you say? But according to my casebook, why, sir, you are not yet five and twenty years of age. Aye, sir, indeed. Tis but the business of playing, though, isn't it? At least, according to Mr. Burbage, he was well vexed when I pointed out how the man played tight as near as old as I am. If the stage is not to your liking, Mr. Bell, I invite you to seek employment elsewhere. All right, then. Let us see what the stars advise. I, I, what can be done to make my querent Humphrey Bell appear younger? I think your employer is a jerk. And I think he's got some weirdness going on behind the scenes. That sounds like a it's like a fetish going on with your employer, honestly. What can I do to look younger? Oh, well, there's only one thing in A. Humphrey must undergo a transformation to repair the damage Time's legacy has wrought. Oh, we don't know about that. Good angels have bestowed upon Humphrey the talent of artistry, which he can use to improve the appearance of his face. This advises him uh, that something refined. This advises that something refined has been obtained from a foreign country can help him appear younger. But there is cruelty involved. Well, we don't want any cruelty. It is God's will that Humphrey embraces his masculinity as he matures. Humphrey is out of touch with reality. He cannot reverse the aging process and look younger. Humphrey's Bosses are impossible to please, and Humphrey should be pessimistic about his ability to reverse the aging process. Um. I mean, I was. I was gonna go along with this one until you told me there was some cruelty involved, and I don't really care for that, even though probably cruelty in the 1600s wasn't as. as uh, reviled. <laughs> As it as it was now, as it is now, they probably don't see it as as cruelty. Um, and I don't know about this transformation. This transformation doesn't seem good. So I think I'm going to have to tell him there's just nothing you could do right now. I'm sorry. What you ask is quite impossible, Mr. Bell. You wish for time to pass, so that you may gain experience and become a better player, do you not? And yet, paradoxically. You ask that time be suspended, so that you may remain young and comely enough to play these roles you have spent years training for. To wit, you aspire to be a domina perfectus. A what? A perfect woman, sir. But have you not considered the option available to you? That of being a homo mediocris? A what now? A mediocre man. In the guise of a mediocre man, you would doubtless excel. Indeed, for every lady role in Mr. Shakespeare's plays, are there not roles for twenty men? And, to be sure, growing older would not shorten your career. For a man can play all kinds of roles at almost any age. Hero, lover, grandfather, oft all at the same time. But well, how am I to convince Mr. Shakespeare and the other shearers to start giving me man parts? Have the company begin seeing you as a man, Mr. Bell. Grow yourself a beard and break wind with abandon. Fill the hours you save on beauty treatments by joining your fellow players on outings to bear-baiting pits and alehouses. 
I will not let you down, Dr. Foreman. Mm. I will make myself so manly, Mr. Shakespeare will be begging me to take his man parts. Don't talk about his man parts. No, don't talk about Mr. Shakespeare's man parts. I'll get demonetized. I mean, it was... I was not expecting that from you, Simon. You really turned it around. I really liked that. You know, just... You, you can't make yourself a become a young woman so own up to it and and play male parts there you go the queer desire to know what he might do to appear younger i did advise the queer to align a lot is that is that that word i don't know that word the need to look younger by switching to male roles me thinks the queer was pleased with me for the reading i gave this day hey 90 percent to our letter re recommendation but i think at this point we're already too Maybe if we got all of them, but I don't think we're getting Miss Mary Payne's. I mean, it's possible that we could get 55 points in the next two, but I kind of doubt it. That bear baiting, though. I ain't gonna watch some poor old bear get attacked by a bunch of dogs, in it. Well, good on you, Humphrey Bell. Good on you for... For, uh... Not wanting to partake in cruelty. Hello, Miss Fortescue. Um, you've been poisoning your guests. We know that. We told you a little, a little error. We made an error in telling you had lusty passions when you had uh, Quincy, um, and then. We told you that your monkey, uh, Sir Nanahad, or whatever his name was, um, was eating up all the pies, and it was not your maidservant who was, uh, who was growing rather large, so hopefully we weren't wrong about that. Good morrow, Mistress Fortescue. How may I do you, sir? Oh, Dr. Foreman, I have urgent need of your advice. Oh, woe! I know not what I am to do. Oh, how can I help, My madam? My word, madam, I have never before seen you in such a state. Uh, pray tell, whatever can the matter be? Tis my husband, Captain Fortescue. God mend me! He has been implicated in a conspiracy to commit treason! My ah, word, yes, lady. your husband, Captain Henry Fortescue. He is a great friend of Sir Walter Raleigh, is he not? Oh, Methinks I see your problem. Is it Mr. Devereux? Ferrari has been implicated in a plot against our new king, has he not? Tis said the plotters wished to oust the king and install the king's cousin on the throne. Or was Rally involved in that other plot? The one to kidnap the king and force him to appoint a more religiously tolerant privy council. In truth, there are so many plots against the English yes, throne these days. So many plots. It's hard to keep abreast of them all. Indeed, I know not which plot Sir Walter was arrested for, but I have heard tell that the Privy Council seeks to find conspirators amongst his associates. Hence, I have been hiding my husband in our cellar and pretending he's still away at well, sea. that's a good plan. But why would your husband fear arrest? Was he involved in Sir Walter Raleigh's plot? Nay, he was not. But all London believes that he and Sir Walter are very great friends. Of course. Ah, yes. I see. But what of your own friends, Mistress Fortescue? All those lords, ladies, and bishops who have so oft graced your table, would they not speak in your husband's defense? Well, good, good idea. dear Emma says she will speak for my husband, but alas, she now has little influence at court on account of some, well, some scandals of her own. Because she's been murdering her As husbands? As my other acquaintances, they have all disowned me. They decline my invitations, and no one is at home to me when I call upon them. That's terrible. Even Sir Munchalot has stopped speaking to me. Oh, not Sir Munchalot. Even your parrot, madam. On oh, my word, that is very cold. I beseech you, sir, read the stars and tell me how I might save my husband from arrest. Pray assure me he will be safe. Let us see, then. Is Captain Henry Fortescue in danger of being arrested for treason? If so, what might Mistress Fortescue do to prevent it? Um, well, you know, you don't have any friends anymore, so your husband is very, uh, learned about the new world. He's been there, he's explored it, you've eaten the great foods of the place, 
So you could just leave. You could go to South America. You could go to the colonies. You could hide out and have a new life. I mean, you wouldn't miss your friends because they've all abandoned you anyways. Will my husband be arrested for treason? And is there anything I might do to prevent it? Simple Fortescue is deluded and has lost touch with reality. I don't know about that one. God will punish Captain Fortescue violently for his part in this conspiracy. Again, don't know about that one. The Fortescue's family reputation is dead. They will go down in history as traitors. So that's all bad. The king will soon be waging a violent war in a foreign country, thus distracting him from hunting for Raleigh's co-conspirators. Mistress Fortescue will may be optimistic about her husband's fate, for the plot against the king will soon be taken far less seriously than it is now. We'll see. Despite what she may think, Sybil Fortescue can still use her social authority and influential relationships to aid her husband. The intelligent course is for Sybil to keep her distress a secret from the world and behave as if she has nothing to fear. I mean, I don't, I don't know about this foreign country stuff. A violent political of seriousness. Is, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, I might go with this one. I don't think you can use your social. I think your social authority is burned and dead. It's obvious if your friends won't respond to you, they don't care about you anymore. But I do agree with um, putting on a brave face and not not being so freaked out so I will tell you that I believe you're gonna have some weird some weirdness going on um, this might be the period of the War of the Roses or was that in the 1500 what, what happened in 1603 because um, I don't think James Stewart or whatever don't think he was the king or did not stay the king for long. I don't know. Go for B. I think you're going to uh, probably fight with France. Be not so afeard, madam, for the stars show cause for optimism. Whilst your family's situation is grave at present, it will not remain so for long. Oh, my days, Dr. Foreman! You cannot imagine how well it is to hear your words! Indeed, given enough time, this plot against the king will be remembered as but a trifling affair. Even King James himself will soon be jesting of it. Ha ha ha, he will remark. Remember you the time Sir Walter Raleigh and his friends tried to snatch away my crown and give it to my cousin? <laughs> Such japes! I don't think he's going to say uh, that. Dr. Foreman, I do not think that can be right. I assure you it is, madam, for the king will soon be engaging England in a bloody foreign war so all-consuming that mere domestic political machinations will seem trifling in comparison. No, oh, my honour, I truly do wish I could believe what you say, but... Tis well known that King James favours peace and does not intend to engage England in more wars. Ah, verily? Yes, verily. Such matters of state have oft been discussed at my table. Whoops. I must own, Dr. Foreman, that your false assurances do give me no comfort. I'm sorry. No comfort at all, Dr. Foreman. I'm sorry, ma'am. Methinks I shall to Whitehall go and throw myself upon the mercy of the king. Well, I hate to hear that. Because that means we're not going to get your letter of recommendation, so we are never going to get our uh, medical license. The querent wished to know whether her husband would be arrested for treason and how she could prevent it. I did advise the querent not to worry, as a foreign war would soon distract the king from seeking to punish traitors. And she took it rather ill. We were so close to getting that letter of recommendation, and we just just missed out. Perchance, perchance if I were to sell my jewels, I could have enough coin to bribe a lord of the Privy Council. Humphrey Bell, your time upon the stage. As you advance in age But hold, but hold no tears, no tears. Come, down, Come down, resign, resign. You'll feel your time You're just, just too old to earn a living wage Too old at 25 years old So it sounds like what we told him to do did not work out He has not become a... 
an actor of the male parts, as he says. That's bad. So, let's listen to Humphrey Bell's complaints and we'll go through his thing and then whatever the next uh, querent is or the next part, we'll probably end there, end this episode there. Let's see. Good day to you, young sir. May I say, your playing of Titus Andronicus's comely mother was excellent well. A wondrous performance, Mr. Bell. I well, I did ask for a man's part, like you told me. Yes. But boss man just winked at me and said he'd consider it, but only if I convince Mistress Burbage I'm a man first. Forsooth, how strange. I wonder what he meant by that. I know what he means though, innit? Mistress Burbage wants to move to me and Mr. Burbage knows all about it. That yeah, sounds about oh, right. Oh my word! But surely, Mr. Bell, if Mistress Burbage's attentions occasion you discomfort, you have merely to tell her so. Make it plain you wish your relationship to remain professional and bid her abstain from any amorous advances. Very well. You what? Nay, sir. If I air her, she'll be vexed and I could lose my job. Know you what I mean? Ah, I see, yes. If she were to take umbrage, she might use her influence over her husband to prevent you from getting work. Well, I do have a recipe for a very effective aphrodisiac. Nay? Then let us see what the stars advise. How might Humphrey Bell calm the ardor of Mistress Burbage without it costing him his career? Um, well, apparently she likes you looking androgynous, so just stop looking androgynous, and maybe, maybe you'll stop appearing attractive to her. How might I calm the ardor of the Mistress Burbage? Mistress Burbage has a choleric, a choleric temperament when it comes to affairs of the heart. She prefers to be the one in charge. Or Mistress Burbage is troubled with the, with a habit for indulging in lustful passions. Maybe this is the chance to, uh, to use lustful passions successfully. All right, let's go for it. Lustful passions it is. It would seem Mistress Burbage's behavior can be attributed to her excessive sanguinity. To wit, there is an imbalance of blood in her body. It compels her towards an indulgence in lustful passions. What do you mean, like? She's ill or something? Her grabbing me backstage and trying to bet me, tis an imbalance of blood making her do all that. So, uh, how do I help her fix her problem, then? Her problem? Oh, nay. Mistress Burbage is not ill. Forsooth, indulging in her lustful passions is a Simon, most Simon, wholesome Simon. pursuit, which doubtless brings her much pleasure. Indeed, the only person who has a problem with her lustful activities is you. You what? The chance you could find a means of adding cooling and drying foods to the lady's diet to counteract the fiery moistness of her sanguinity. The fiery moistness. I suggest uh, myrtle berries, lettuce, and mallows. Hmm. Methinks I can add them plants to the morning potage she takes during rehearsal. And if that don't make her move from me, I might start adding poison, innit? That, well, I cannot recommend that course of actions, Mr. Bell. Um, in fact, if I'm asked by the authorities, I will have to tell them. Um, but, you know, I'll try not to. The wife of the of one of the Quarant's bosses had designs upon his person, and he wished to know how to calm her ardor. I did judge Mistress Burbage as having a habit for lusty passions, and advised the Quarant to introduce introduce cool drying foods to her diet. He thinks the Quarant was a little pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. And there's our letter of recommendation, but again, I don't think it matters because I don't think we can get eight at this point. Because we've already missed on one, two, three, four, five. We would have to get... We've only received one, two, three, four. We'd have to get all other four, and that's just not going to happen, I don't think. All right, let's listen to the next next piece. And then, oh, there's no, uh, no informative flavor text down here. Let's listen to the next piece, and then we'll end the episode. Hey! Raleigh's ally, Henry Fortescue, arrested for treason. Hear ye! Well, that 
was clearly a wrong option. Well, let's read this and then we'll listen to the next second of the episode. In a raid on his house early this morning, Captain Henry Fortescue was arrested for his plot, his part in a plot against the king. Neighbors report that he had been hiding in the basement to escape punishment. His wife Sybil Fortescue, formerly much renowned in royal court circles for her dinner parties, has vowed to fight on the on to prove her husband's innocence and win his freedom. Sources say that she had gotten she had better get on with it, for if he is convicted at trial this evening, he will be executed tomorrow morning. Hate to hate to hear it. Well, 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 Lancelot Moore, welcome back. Do we have any chance of, uh, we, we have a chance of getting your letter. But I guess I will end the episode since it's went on long enough. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again next time.